The first time I saw her was in fall of 1956, the band room in Missoula County High School. And we were watching all the freshmen walk into band practice during the summer. And I saw this brunette come in with a ponytail through the door with her horn, French horn in hand. And that's the very first time I laid eyes on her. He was adventuresome. And he wasn't the cowboy that I had I had planned on, <laughs> but uh, boy, he, uh, I don't know, there was just, it was just, he was just the one. Our first date was uh, was after a football game, and uh, and I was very, you know, kind of in awe of him because he was a senior and I was a freshman. Went to Brownies, in and out, bought her hamburger. First kiss too, first date. Ooh. Scary. I should I should <laughs> should have ran. We got married on July first of 1961. Went into the Air Force in uh, 8 March to pilot training. Went through pilot training with the goal of becoming a fighter pilot. A uh, very competitive environment. Uh, everything is uh, number one gets their choice. So uh, there was only one fighter assignment came down, which I happened to be fortunate enough to get. And the F-101 is a uh, high detail supersonic straight line interceptor aircraft. You would go out, out over the Atlantic Ocean early in the morning, come back in, climb up to altitude and go supersonic. So you would become the first super, the supersonic target for the day. Christmas, December 1966, needs of the service said, okay, you're gonna go to Da Nang. And oh, by the way, all you have to live in is a tent. So on Christmas, I'm laying in bed as the rain's falling through the holes in the roof of the tent, thinking, what am I doing here? Well, I came back to live with my mother-in-law uh, in Missoula while he was in Vietnam. It was very, very scary. Um, it was not a popular war, and so there were a lot of people that really didn't care that your husband was there, and, and, and the news was always, you know, anti anti-war. Uh, the night of September 3rd of 1961, I didn't get any sleep. So that morning, I had an early flight that I had to participate in. So I said, now, you sure you don't want me to stay home? No. Are you positive? Yes. So I said, all right, I'm going to go fly, and I'll call you just before I take off. Okay. So I did. She says, no, I'm home all right. I'm all right. So I take off. I'm flying, I flew for about two hours and some minutes. Come back and land and they meet me and say, happy, or, congratulations, congratulations, Father. <laughs> yeah, so she didn't even know she was in labor. No. Uh, both of our children are absolutely beautiful, absolutely take after their father in their, their self-image. They were excellent children in the fact that they had to deal with moving around. We lived in Europe for 10 years and that's where Brian was born and uh, they had to change schools. Sometimes this is very difficult for military children, but our children actually thrived on the, that opportunity. Went on to become a full colonel and uh, chief of maintenance and retired from the Air Force after 24 years, of which we enjoyed every minute of it. I've had a great life. I, I have a wonderful husband. I have wonderful children. Uh, I've lived a long time. I've done so many things in my life that uh, you know, I've met the Queen of England, I've um, traveled um, throughout Europe, traveled throughout the United States, and uh, have had an absolutely wonderful ride. You know, I'm happy with where I'm at. Happy in life, and if I die tomorrow, I'll be just perfectly content. I've been a lot of places, met a lot of people, done a lot of things, and had a good time. I've got a great family that will follow me. What more can you ask for?